Hey everybody, welcome back to another creative tutorial. Today we're going to continue going over the filters and the, fil and the gimmick filter tool and what some of those options look like. So we're going to go back to filter and start gimmick. We are going to go over the degradations and details. So we're not going to go over everything because there's a lot for both, but we'll go over some of them. So to start simple add grain, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's adding grain or noise, whatever you want to call it. It's just got a little bit of a texture to it. So we can change what that looks like, um, the opacity, how much it's going to cover. We can change the scale of it. If we want something like a larger grain size, you know, standard grain, nothing too extravagant with it, but it is useful. I have used it before, especially with backgrounds. I usually layer it with other filters though, because that's where I personally think it um, can come in handy. You could change the blend mode and that will change how it looks. So you can do grain only. I don't know, maybe you want grain only. You do the alpha. You can do, oops, grain merge was a default. Hard light and overlay and soft light. I will say though that the green only can be helpful if you need to have something within a specific shape that you have. You can get that right off the bat without using like masks and stuff and selection tools for that layer. Might be something to consider. We have a ton of blur options. So it's just blurring in a specific manner. You have a control point you can change where the blur is going to like start, like the origin point. So bloom, I like the bloom one. It's actually, it's got like a nice glowy effect. You have depth of field. So what that's doing is it's making a focal point and then everything outside that initial focal point just gets blurrier. Um, you see this a lot with some vlogging on YouTube and cameras and photographs where it blurs out the background. You have your Sierra Gaussian blur. You have a glow, which I liked. It had a nice little look to it. It seemed to only affect like the color, like the brighter colors, but I think it might just be that this is a dark blue, so it's not really going to have a glow effect. But it looks, I liked it. It looked pretty cool. Uh, linear, so it's just straight left and right, multi-directional. Some crazy stuff. <laughs> you have radial, so that's going to be like a circle. Or it's gonna, have, it's gonna start in one center point and then go out, like towards you in a way. And then splinter. That's kind of interesting. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yes. That has an interesting look to it. It looks kind of like the multi directional, but it looks like it also really blurs this to some really intense degree. It's very transparent looking now. All right, so we have a dirty filter, which actually kind of looks cool. It definitely looks grungy. It's got a weird rustic look to some of those oranges, but uh, this would be really cool for this specific character because she is, after all, a zombie. So I'm gonna have to go back and look in more into that. I might be changing her illustration. <laughs> you have fragment blur. It looks... Um, like it's ghosting in a way. So like ghosting means that when you have something that prints and it offsets it a little bit, it is like a ghost. <laughs> it it just, just reminds me of that. It's very interesting. Or if you're doing a comic or whatever illustration, you need something to look like it's been shaken or is shaking, this would be a good way to do it. Uh, Huffman glitches. So this was pretty neat. I'm gonna actually lower this level. So the lower the noise level, the less of an effect it's going to have. So let's go a little larger here. So it's kind of like a glitch effect, but it just, I don't know, I thought this looked really neat. It just kind of needs some fine tuning to get the look you want. I thought that was cool. This would be really nice to do with photographs to have a little like a, a little pop to it. I don't really know why you would want this, but this is JPEG artifacts. So if you were to save this as, as a low res JPEG, you can see how there's a loss of quality along the edges. 
Um, I do have more artifacting along the edges here. There was some like color I had to erase before I did this. And it seems to not have been fully erased or taken care of or it's bringing it back in and enhancing it to a larger degree than you can see without it. Um, I mean, if you are saving as a JPEG though, maybe this is a quick way to see the quality before you actually save it. This video of higher quality looks clean and beautiful. There's still some artifacting though. And then if you're like, oh, I want to save this at a... Uh, oh, jeez much lower percentage, you're going to get a lot of artifacting. So you can always use this just to test out your file before you go to save it as a JPEG. You have old school 8 bits, which is very pixelated, kind of like you did some pixel art. It does change the color as well. No, oh, I think it's just depending on the preview. I did notice that with some of these filters, the preview changes like when you move it around. Um, I don't really know what it, it like comes I never had an issue when I actually went to hit apply yet, but just keep, I guess maybe just keep that in the back of your mind that maybe the look might change when you apply it. I like this rain and snow. It looked really nice. I mean, I thought, you know, it's a very nice effect. You can change the angle of it. You can change the speed. So that's just going to like make it longer. So this is going to look like a heavier downpour, for example. So if we increase that even more, can say, oh, it's raining intensely, it's, it's a downpour. <laughs> you can change the opacity, you can lower that. So maybe you want a different background behind it. You have a city or some other environment you want to put there. You can kind of make it transparent so you can overlay it. Can't zoom in. So this looks like it's just kind of giving some variegated stripes here and like brightness, dark, it's an interesting um, effect here. Self glitching. There's a lot of these types of effects. Oh, this is cool. I like the interactive filters. They do take up more memory, but they're pretty neat. Yeah, it sucks that you can't zoom in. I just like that there's so many different glitch effects that you can use. Let's actually move this up a little. There we go. And then visible watermark. See, I already played with it. Um, I was actually looking at all this stuff earlier today to see what was what, and the watermark actually was very nice. So when I go to finish something, I'm like, all right, it's saved as a JPEG or PNG. Sometimes I'll open that back up and then I'll make a new layer, take the create a text tool, type in my stuff, resize it, transform it, change the opacity. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just use this. I will have to play with the size and all that to see if I can get just one of the watermarks to show up because I don't need a ton of them and there is no option to change the quantity of watermark lines. But this is still pretty useful. I don't have to do all that work anymore <laughs> to put a watermark over my stuff. So if you were avoiding doing watermarks, because it's such a pain, this is the best way to do it. You can change the angle of it as well, so you can rotate it. So there's quite a bit of control over here, all in one tool. Don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with opacity layers and stuff. Now the only downfall is, once you apply it, you're not gonna be able to go back and edit it. So if you spelled your name wrong or whatever, you're gonna have to redo it. But it's still not as painful as the text tool in Korea. And that's pretty much a quick look at the uh, degradations and one of the details. And there's quite a bit here. So we're only going over a couple of them. So this one took a while to load. It looks like it kind of makes it very blotchy. And these right here in, in the details section are more than likely going to be much better for actual photographs versus an illustration. As you can see, makeup, mask, uh, mask creator is just making masks, but easy skin retouch, high pass. A lot of this is going to be 
for photo retouching and stuff like that. But they can still kind of have some really interesting looks for your illustrations. Um, the freaky details, it just kind of looked like it lightened everything, it added an interesting tone to it. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, high pass, it's kind of changing the highlights. And we have high pass as a really, again, this is most likely better, better for photographs versus illustration. But I do like it has a glowy look around the lines. It looks cool to me. The local is definitely going to be for more photographs, but it's got a really interesting glow to some of this outline here. It's like taking the shapes and it's outlining them with that. So I thought that was interesting. The contrast enhancement is just making the contrast better or intensifying it so I can change the darkness level so you can see her eyes here how dark they get and around here around her neck can lower the lightness level so that kind of goes back to what I had only some of the color has a darker tone to it now if I brighten everything maybe taking down the darkness level it just kind of blows it up so the mask creator is like kind of making a, a mask, which is kind of helpful. So if you start changing some of this, you can kind of get a finer detail for certain areas here. We have some sharpen options. So if you have a blurry photo, these would be very good to use to kind of bring some detail back in. Um, you might get some detail loss out of it. Uh, this is a raw illustration basically, so there's nothing really blurry, but this has an interesting look. It's kind of transparent. I thought that was pretty neat um, to see how that works with, you know, something I drew. Spotify has a really interesting neon sign look to it. So I was playing with texture, I didn't see any real change. Let's see here. Yeah, I didn't see much of a change. Um, ah, here we go. Looks like it's adding some texture to the lines, which I don't think I'd ever want. But overall, I didn't see too many major changes that I really cared to point out. Then we have Yag Effect. This was really interesting look. So I switched it to preview type so we can kind of compare the before and after. So a lot of these will have that, but not all of them. And I really do appreciate the ones that have this preview type because it's really nice to be able to compare the before and the after. Because sometimes when you're playing with these for a while, like I do, you kind of forget what the original looks like and it's like, oh, what did that do again? So I think if there, if I had any wish list items, I would want all of these to have a preview type, if possible. So let's bring that down. Interesting, it looks like it's changing transparency on the background. Oh, there it goes, it's darkening that. Oh, this very interesting effect over the color. And that's pretty much it for the details and degradations. Um, we'll be able to go over the frames and frequencies next time. There's quite, I think we might be able to do each one for each category. Yes, they're small enough to do that, which is very nice. Degradations. All right, so that's it for those two options, the degradations and details. Um, hopefully you learned something from some of these filters and, and like I said, I definitely recommend using the visible watermark versus making the text its own layer unless you need to edit the text very often. Um, this is pretty helpful for artists who are like me and just get tired of doing watermarks because they can be a pain in the butt. So if there's anything you should check out, it's definitely that one. 
And there's some other stuff in here that's pretty fun, like JPEG artifacts can be helpful, like I said, for previewing quality loss and all that good stuff. Grain, blur, um, you got some extra noise in here, sloppy mess, which is similar to, uh, what was it? Dirty. <laughs> Very descriptive filters. They're just pretty neat. I like them. I really like this. It's got a really cool spooky effect. Be really cool to do for uh, gravestones in a graveyard if you want that grungy look. All right, and that is it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next tutorial going over the next two filters, which is details and frames. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.